The Phoenix Suns were in town visiting the New York Knicks at Madison Square Garden. No Kevin Durant, no Bradley Beal, but for Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns, it was no problem because they would outwork these Knicks in the first half. 14 offensive rebounds, but it would be a tale of two halves for these New York Knicks as Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and Emmanuel quickly would do their best to keep the orange and blue alive. But at the end of the day, it was Devin Booker who got the last laugh. Book was sensational and gets the final three-pointer with one second left on the dial. And Jalen Brunson would try to even this up, but his shot would just rim out. And just like that, the Knicks fall 116 to 113. All the good vibes out the window for tonight. But let's nah. talk about it, man. KFTV Post Game Live. You had no Kevin Durant, no Bradley Beal, the storyline. But I felt trap game ish with this game. And not mm. trap game, not trap game like, you know, tonight, for example, you have Denver playing the Spurs. That's trap game with Denver at yes. home. Trap game in terms of. Just playing down to the situation. You know, no no Bradley Beal, no KD. So maybe the Knicks felt like they could coast their way to victory tonight. But as they would find out early in this game, the Suns are coming to work. They were coming to work. And they beat the Knicks at their own game. Second chance points. They kept the Knicks off the boards. They controlled the glass. Eric Gordon turned back the clock. He's still hitting threes. The lights are off at Madison Square Garden. Eric Gordon is still bombing away and hitting wide open threes from the weak side. 25 points for him. You gave up 28 points and 11 assists to Devin Booker. Oof. And this was the thing, bro. Like, this is exactly what I felt like when the second half was ending. I said two things are going to happen in the second half. The Knicks are going to wake up, but so is Devin Booker because he was quiet in the first half. Yep. And I said, you know what? The Knicks are going to make their shots in the, in the second half. They're going to come back and, and play with more energy. But Devin Booker is too. And that's what happened. And so the entire second half, they're playing catch up and catch up and catch up. But the Suns, led by Book, are still executing. And at the end, I, I just felt like, you know, Belichick says it. They made more plays than we did down the stretch. And I felt like that's what Phoenix did, man. Look, you said it. They got outworked, man, throughout the – throughout throughout. I'd say out – all this game, man, because look, when you give up that, when Devin Booker only has eight points in the first half, and then you allow, and and you're still down by eight, you, that's that's just spells trouble. Like we saw with Ant Man earlier this week, yeah. right, where Ant wasn't going off in the first half, but then second half comes along, he decides to turn it up. Now, for Book, like the last shot, that's just what he does, man. Honestly, it's a heartbreaker. That's just what he does. When he got the when he got the ball back, I was like, "Oh, please, not this fadeaway three. And it looked, yeah. when I saw it, I was like, "Ah, this is going in, it's man. Going that's in, just, going it just in. it's just it's iconic Devin Booker right there, man. That's why yeah. he is who he is." But for the Knicks, you can't be down. And when you know, you you said you kind of describe like trap gameish, but and, and like for the Knicks, like you have to know who your opponent is. They're coming from a they're coming out from the West Coast, right? They're in the Western Conference. It's a tough division. They're trying to make it. They know they don't have Bradley Beal. They don't have Kevin Durant tonight. But yet, they still have to fight because if they lose any games that they believe are winnable, they're already setting themselves back That's for right. the position that they need in the Western Conference. So right. you, as the Knicks, need to know that these guys are hungry. It's not that they're coming out here on a road trip and be like, oh, we're going to cool. And Devin Booker is not that guy who's like, eh, it's okay. Like, we saw Jimmy Butler go against the Brooklyn Nets after he lost to the, Miami, after he lost to the, the New York Knicks, right? He didn't play against the Brooklyn Nets. Even though he wasn't on yeah. the injury report, he was like, you know what? Not tonight, man. Not tonight. But... For the Knicks, you just caught, caught you got to bounce back. You got another game on Tuesday against the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Uh, that's the last game of an in-season in tournament. In-season tournament lives so, on the line. Maybe they were just overlooking this. You know, they were overlooking the Suns and getting ready for Tuesday's battle because they want to get to Vegas. Maybe. Let's give. I hope let's not. Give them the I hope not because the Hornets are a terrible team. You shouldn't be overlooking <laughs> the Phoenix Suns <laughs> for the Charlotte Hornets. Come on now. You don't need to do that. You got to be. You got to wake up for every single game. The Knicks are not a team that can just cruise, man. But. If it was looking at anything, it's like you need Julius Randle to be there in the first half, right? That's one thing. I, I, I tweeted this out during the game when it came to halftime. I needed Julius Randle to be 
play like how I've seen him play in the first quarter last season. He did that in the third quarter. Yeah. I also needed Mitchell Robinson to get back and be activated on the board to play solid defense because he wasn't doing that in the first half either. Those two things happened, and look what happened. The Knicks are back in this game, no problem. Ah, oh, man, that was a real tough loss. Yep. Um, as I look at the, uh, the box scores, though, with the exception of the free throws, and Jalen Brunson missed two clutch free throws um, when we really needed it. Um, but with the exception of those and missed free throws, everybody else was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, our three-point field goal percentage, that was decent. The only place we really got work that was on the boards, man. Um, and everybody wants to get rid of uh, Randall. Listen, listen mm. people, I know a whole lot of guys don't like Randall. But yeah. guess what? There's not a whole lot of people that's playing his position that's better than him. Yeah. And let's just, let's just be honest. Now, granted, we do need some more help. I don't know where we're going to get it from because we are undersized all across the board mm -hmm. with the exception of the four and the spot, uh, five spot. But, man, we in there, man. We in We just got to stay the course. Um, usually we don't get out-rebounded or, you know, yeah. too yeah. many points in the paint. But tonight it, w it was one of those nights when we didn't get on the boards. Randall didn't, didn't get his usual 10. Um RJ usually gets about four or five. He only had about two. Yeah. You know, and like I said, it, it, it's the free throws, man. Those those clutch free throws. Um, I, And Lord knows I love Mitch. Mitchy no snitchy, but yeah. my goodness, he has to work on his free throws, man. Yeah. But, again, like I said, the three-point uh, field goal percentage was great. And, you know, the – it's just the free throws, man, and we got out rebounding. That for the number one team, uh, number one team in rebounds, and we got out rebounded by like what forty seven, thirty eight, or 47, something like that. Forty seven, thirty nine. They beat us at our own game. <laughs> and how often does that happen? Yeah, like I yeah. said, usually we we got worked on the boards tonight, and the free throws. Even though we didn't miss that many, it, it was timely. Just the, the times I think timely. Tell you what, yeah, timely because you're yeah, trying to catch but, up. You know what I mean? You, you're trying to exactly. catch up, and, and they exactly. and they kept firing. They kept coming through. So it just made a, a, a seven, eight-point lead. It, it felt like a 12-point lead. It just felt like that because for for every you know inch we took, Phoenix would take another two. So it was a tough, tall order tonight. It just felt like, you know, in the words of the late Dennis Green, they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Well, we will see you guys. Uh, we'll be on for Knicks Weekly tomorrow, early time, 12 o'clock, early start for Knicks Weekly, and we'll see you on the NBA Report at 3 o'clock, man. Al, doubleheader. See you tomorrow. Great show, man.